So take the end of the strap and you should have a buckle that moves. So put your strap underneath the buckle and then put it on top of the buckle. Oops, I didn't mean to drop it. So that you make what's called a cinch. And then I can make it shorter, okay? So those of you that have a strap, make it a uh, shoulder width apart and then just set it down. And if you don't have it, it doesn't matter. Okay, let's get long today and mobilize and strengthen these guys. So find your comfortable seat. Close your eyes or soften your gaze. Hi, Jen. Hi, Don. Welcome to your practice. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for coming to your mat and practicing yoga. Thanks for joining in our community. I love you guys and it's so good to be with you. Take a few centering breaths just to bring your attention here and now and on your body. Just kind of noticing how you feel. Noticing how your body presents itself in this moment. Moment. So noticing kind of what's tight, what's loose, where you have kind of impulses to want to maybe lengthen or stretch. If there's any intention that you want to use in your practice today that you want to cultivate, it could be something physical that you want to work with, but it could also be something kind of mental or emotional that you want to bring to your mat. So let that be a part of your practice if it's relevant. Okay, so we're gonna take a big inhale and you're gonna lift the arms up. And on the exhale, kind of join the palms and out through your uh, nose, slow, continuous exhale. Inhale, flip the palms, come up. Exhale, out and away. Palms up to the sky, inhale. Slow, continuous exhale, press palms down. Interlace those fingers, press the palms up, inhale. Press it out and away, exhale. Nice deep breath, inhale. Lift and stretch, then exhale as you join those fingers. Interlace the palms, press up. Press out and away. Drop your right ear to your right shoulder. Walk those left fingertips out and away. Take your right hand to the side of your left kind of temple area and kind of draw it down as you take five deep breaths to the side of your neck. Really feeling that wrist line, draw energy from your ears. Two more, stretch out from thumb to pinky line. And then letting that hand go, the head go, let your chin drop to your chest. Feel your collarbone spread, but kind of stretch the back of your neck. Maybe you have to move your head a couple times. And then using your heel of the hands to the forehead, lift your head up. Just take note of the differences between your neck, and then drop left ear to left shoulder, broaden collarbones, and then let your right palm kind of reach out. If you want a little more, take that hand, kind of grab onto the head, just kind of like let it be heavy so that you're not using the shoulder. Five deep breaths into the upper trap, shoulders, neck. Your jaws relax here too, so especially the tongue. And 
And then one more deep breath, start to relinquish the hand from the head and roll the chin down to the chest. Stretching the back of the neck a couple breaths. And then heel the hands to forehead to lift up. And then kind of lengthening through your neck as you tilt the chin up, stretching the front of the throat if that's okay. Keep the lifting up and the shoulder blades drawing down so you don't compress the cervical spine. We just kind of allow it to shorten a bit. And then chin back down. Roll those shoulders up back and down a few times. And then roll in the other way. And then both ways are kind of rolling like you're rowing. And then roll it forward. Yeah. Okay. We're going to come back onto the mat if you're not already there. So remember a couple uh, days ago, maybe, or maybe it's last week, we did scapular push-ups. We're going to try that again. So remember scapular push-ups, the elbows don't move. They stay straight, and you're just, your hips aren't moving either. So first, just finding a tabletop. Then you're dropping the chest so that the shoulder blades kind of uh, move back. And then you're lifting the chest. So I'm just doing this through the shoulder blades. So they draw together. They draw apart. They draw together, they draw apart. No push up, arms stay straight. Up leveling, we bring the knees back and we do this. So it's a lot more load, so be careful. And we're gonna do about 10 or 12 of these. So again, at your own level, I'm just gonna watch, because these can be here again. Nice, Guido, nice. So can you straighten your elbows? Yeah, don't move, don't bend the elbows. Yeah, so it's just through the shoulder blades. Yes, 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 good. Yeah, nice, you got it, good. Less with your neck more and a little bit more shoulder blades to keep that neck long. Yeah, I know, it's like, these like, where you have to make your brain rewire. Yeah, good, good, good. Nice, Don, yep, Jim, good, keep those elbows nice and straight. Let's do five more, you guys got it. Just kind of putting your awareness there will help too, because again, this is like a different move than we're, habitually doing. Good, and then we're gonna bring the knees up and then we're gonna roll those shoulders again. Okay, so we're gonna take the arms forward. We're gonna do these together. We did them apart last time. So you can kneel if that's a better position for you. We're gonna reach the arms forward like you're reaching to shake someone's hand and then draw them on your back. So that's what we just did on our hands and knees. Okay, so just remembering that. We're gonna add a circle with it. So I'm gonna go forward, up, back, up, down, back, down, forward. So I'm making a big circle, nice and slow. So don't forget the reach. Don't forget to pull back and then go forward. Uh, yeah, uh, keep going. We're gonna go three more just like that. Yep, that's it you guys, really nice. Yeah, keep reaching through those arms. Awesome, yeah, you guys are rocking. Rachel, I can only see your waist, but your waist looks awesome. <laughs> I, I bet you're doing it. Now we're gonna go the other way. So remember we reached first, forward. I want you to go back, forward. Let's go down, forward, up. So I want you to visualize that circle. It's more like a, um, an oval, I guess, really, huh? And as you're visualizing it, kind of noticing where the oval maybe needs to get kind of more refined lines or where it gets light. Just kind of noticing for your body what action might feel less. Okay, we're gonna do two more. Uh, and then swing and shake it out. Whew, that heats you up for sure. Okay, we're going to come onto our backs. So here's your options if you have a strap. You don't have to use this for some core work. So I want to make sure the strap's not too wide. So I'm going to put it kind of uh, right at kind of below my forearms, and I want to make sure that I'm just in a straight line. I don't have like a, um, I don't, my circle or my, my arms don't go wide, right? So I might have to shorten it or, or um, 
make it bigger if it's too small. So we're going to have the strap in our arm, so like so. Okay, so we, we did a lot of this work before. So I'm going to take the arms up. If you don't have a strap, then you just have arms just like I'm saying. So squeeze your armpits together, press your shoulder blades down, and I want you to reach actively your arms over your head and stop the minute your rib cage wants to lift. Okay, bring your knees up to tabletop, start to lengthen from your armpit out through your arms, so get longer and just take the legs out. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. So our arms are pressing into the strap. So I'm pressing wide, I'm lengthening from armpit out through my hands. And they don't have to be, you know, straight up, and they're also not uh, parallel. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Keep breathing. Take your breath, feel the waist pull in towards the midline as the low back lengthens. You have five more, four, three, two, and then one more. Take the arms up and then lower them down. Shake it out for a moment, take it out. Take the strap out from your arms and you're gonna let the knees knock together. Take the arms up. This time we're gonna take the palms to face your knees and you're not gonna worry about that squeezing in so much. Just kind of feel a lightness of the heaviness. And then just nice and slowly take your arms over your head. Be nice and slow about it. And then when you start to feel the elbows want to bend or your rib cage lift, just pause. Take some deep breaths and keep reaching and descending. And just kind of see where they go. And they might just stay just like this, hovering. They may not ever reach the mat, but just take so you don't have a back arch. Just kind of stretching out. So my hands don't touch the floor, it's totally fine. And then circle them out by your hips and down by your waist and then relax. So if you have the strap again, I'm gonna place it now between my uh, ankles. So I have some active resistance here. So if I don't have this, I could block, that works too. The squeeze a pillow. Um, it's gonna be a little bit different action because we're pressing apart, so we're feeling the outer hips. Uh, you would be feeling something slow, slightly different uh, if you have the block, but that's just it's still good work, right? We're just adding some head work. Interlace your hands behind your head. The elbows point slightly upward. Take a deep breath in, and on the exhale, as you pull the belly down and lift, press into the strap, and then lower down. Lift up. And if you want to lower the legs down a bit, you can. So I'm lifting up. And as I lower the shoulders, I can lower the legs. Keep that pressing into the strap. Lift up, lower down. And you have four more. Nice and slow. It stays down as you lower the legs. Active feet. One more. And then bring the legs up. You're going to take one leg out of the strap, and I'm going to use this lasso to hold on to the foot. Okay, straighten your left leg all the way out. So for a minute, as I'm kind of pressing down on the strap, that I could do this too. I want you to try to push your foot into the strap and try to let your foot drag down as I'm pulling back, right? So there's a little bit of active resistance. So I'm trying to lower my leg at the same time I'm trying to pull my leg towards me for five, four, three, two, relax it and then see if you have a little bit more openness through your hamstring. Breathe in and out. Nice deep breath. And we're do some light cuts. So bend that up knee, straighten it, bend the knee, straighten it a few more times. Just kind of open it up here. Yeah, nice. Switch the legs. Left leg in, right leg feet are put flat or down. So remember with my arms, I'm pulling the leg towards me. With my leg, I'm pushing away. So I'm going to feel the hamstring engage. That's what I want you to feel is there an engagement at the back of the leg. So it should feel like it's warming up a bit for five, four, three, two, and then just relax. 
So what we're doing is we're, it's called eccentric strengthening. It's strengthening the muscle in an elongated form, which is a really great way to actually get improvements in your flexibility while getting improvements in strength. If you cared. <laughs> Three, just bending and straightening. Two, and one. Nice. And you can let both legs come up. You can take the strap away for a moment. Find a happy baby. <sighs> breathing in, breathing. And then we're going to take the uh, knees uh, wide and we'll take the arms out to that goal post for a moment just to open up the chest, open up the inner thighs. So feeling those elbows reach apart as the shoulder blades drop. Nice big breath across the chest. And then as you're ready, so we're going to bring the knees to touch and we'll let the arms internally rotate. Remember we did the strengthening work in this last uh, on Monday and then open. Close as arms roll down and open. So this is just mobility through the hips and through the shoulders. So my hips don't move, friends, so make sure your core is strong. We're just mobilizing through those hips. Keep your breath going, couple more. And now hold that upward motion. And can you imagine that you are kind of resisting something? So remember we had our hand there. So can you imagine an active resistance kind of there so that it feels like you're actually working those muscles? Relax and then, and then just let it be where it is. And then come back up. We'll take the strap if you under you for an inch. So I'm going to lift my hips and I'm going to take the strap so that my hands are facing out, thumbs face up. I'm going to roll underneath if I'd like and I'll stretch my fingertips towards my heels as I press through them. And by the way, I have a bunch of straps, you guys. So like we don't cater to like some. I'll put this in the mail for you if you'd like. Because um, they have a bunch like for retreats and stuff. So if anybody wants a strap, you don't have to order it from Amazon or Manuka. I can, I can send you one. So just remind me. So feel your feels, you feel your heels, you guys press down, lengthen through those inner lines. Stay here, bring your right knee in, stretch it up. Press down through the outer border of your shoulders. Take another deep breath. And then right leg replaces. Reform your bridge. Make sure you feel nice and strong through the low back, through the core, and then left knee comes up. Press those outer border of shoulders down and lift the leg up. So that I feel supported in the shoulders, even though I'm lifting the chest. And then knee back in. Up and roll down. You might want to grab the knees, just kind of rock and rolling, stretching into the low back. All righty. Let's rock and roll ourselves up to all fours again. Get nice and long here. So for a moment, we're going to take that right arm and we're going to lift it up. So just like we're overhead, can you feel that gentle squeeze in so the outer border of your shoulder rolls down? And then can from armpit or reach out. Continue that with the left leg back. Firm through the low belly, and let's lift the left leg up. So let's stretch those two apart. For three, for two, and then place the right leg down. But we'll keep the leg lifted as we tuck the right toes under and come to a three leg. So nice big link here from that left low belly out through your left leg, out through your left palm. Take a deep breath in and then step your leg forward. Get your right and up. So if you have the strap, if I want to, I can work if I want right here. So bend the left knee so that you get that nice opening. I'm pressing the strap apart. I'm pre pulling the ribs in just like I did and reaching up. For three, for two, and down. I'm gonna lower. I'm gonna take the behind me now. 
squeeze. So just like I did in front, bring the shoulders back apart. I take a nice bit lengthening here, pressing back foot, releasing the hips forward. So my shoulders are on my back, only lifting the arms as much as I can keep them on my back, and I'm pressing into the strap. If you don't have the strap, remember you're just doing this work with just like with pretending that you have something either squeeze, which you can squeeze upon. Or you could just imagine that you have something there for three. Keep pressing the back foot away as you allow the hips to release for two. And one. As you're ready, you can release the strap if you'd like. Step forward and lengthen forward fold. And just take your time here. Relax your head, shake it out. We're going to take that left knee behind the right so that we kind of have the knees touch in together. I'm going to squat. My hands come to the waist and I lift up. Left arm goes nice and long. Grab onto your wrist. Pull the wrist back. Lift up. Side stretch. Breathe in. Really find that whole right heel, full circumference. Feel your whole left side stretch. Breathe in and breathe out. And as we're going to unbind ourselves and step all the way up. Nice deep breath. And on the L, forward fold. Nice long back. Come to a halfway lift where your shoulders are slightly over your hips, elevated higher than your hips. Hands to the heart. This is a little back strengthening. If you keep your hands here, do so. You can also extend your arms forward like you've been practicing. I'm going to run into my wall so I can't. All the way up to stay up. Arms sweep up. So practice that length. So we don't want to do a back bend. We want to make sure we hold the ribs, relax inner border of shoulder, release and stretch out and forward. Circle out and away, fold forward. Nice long spine, inhale. We'll step on back to that same lunge with the back. On this, this time, we're going to grab the strap, or again, if you don't have this, just totally. I'm here. Release, shoulders back and down, hinge forward, come into a warrior three, balance here. Arms back, arms back, shoulders on your back, two, and then go ahead and bend the knee, step on back to a warrior two, just allow me to switch positions here. So I'm still in that same pen bind, right, or I'm the towel. And I'm squeezing it apart, right? That still gives that same work. I want you to find your strong leg, shoulders down your back. So let the fingertips lengthen the sides of your neck. This is the way we're doing it with the strap. Nice deep breath. Press your feet apart. Feel your legs solidify. Feel that lift up from your pelvis to your core. Then I'm going to keep that nice side body lengthening as I come towards my thigh. I can let my neck go or look down. For three, for two, big breath in. Now as I'm ready, I'm going to straighten the leg, release the strap for a moment, take it forward. Just a few times, just bend and straighten. Just bend and straighten. You got it. Okay, one more with this same kind of work in triangle. So straighten the leg. Once again, roll the shoulders up, back and down, take the arms forward. So again, I'm gonna squeeze the armpits together to kind of feel that connection to my core, and nice and slowly, I'm gonna lift the arms. If I go into back bend, the arms need to stay further forward, okay? I'm releasing that um, soft tissue through my bicep, and I'm elongating the tricep line, okay? Same thing we're gonna do here, but now it's gonna be a triangle, so I'm not gonna go quite so far for me. Now use the left arm to lengthen the right arm a little more, the right waist a little more. It's okay for your right hip to turn down and forward, but keep lengthening the right side body. One more breath. And then come up, you got it. Turn the toes to the face forward. Let go of that strap. Take your arms and stretch up. Exhale, forward fold. So watch this to stretch. So take your right arm forward and kind of tent the palm of it. Let your head go and cat your back. Cat your back. Now I'm going to turn to the right to twist, and I'm going to keep my cat back. So I'm going to round it up or back to twist. With my left hand, I'm kind of pulling into my right shin. With my right shin, I'm pushing into my left. 
letting the head go. Rotating and twisting. So again, with that cat back, you should feel a nice little release through the left scapula, maybe even through your neck. Let your neck get really long. That was a lot of work. Okay. Releasing the hands, turn towards the front of your mat. Put your knees down and grab a block. You have it. If you don't have a block, totally fine. You'll just visualize this. We're going to put the block on the highest setting for a moment. I want you to practice a chaturanga in which you just tap the sternum. This is your sternum to the block so that you can keep your elbows by your waist and your chest broad. So I want you to imagine like, you know, kind of like plank where you were doing this, but now we just move the elbows. So let's just try that. So shoulders over hips, we bring the elbows in. You notice how my chest and my hips aren't moving, right? They're staying fixed. We're gonna do the same work on the black, on the, on the block. So come to a plank or a knee plank, okay? I want you to get super long. So imagine we were just where we were, shoulders and hips one line, then the elbows just tap your sternum and come up. Try this like five times. Elbows wrap in. So your triceps get a nice little workout here. Neck is long. Two more. One more. And when you're ready, show them back. You can move your block. It can actually go, if you'd like, between your inner thighs. If you want some extra work, if you want to try a locust pose. Like Again, we're using it today, so you can go ahead and press it on. Shoulders roll up, back, and down. I'm pressing into my strap. I'm going to lift the upper half, press the pubic bone, secure my legs. I can keep the legs down, or I could lift the legs. If I had a block, I could squeeze it. But you would need to keep the legs somewhat lower for three for two, and relax. Let that strap go somewhere close, press that child's pose. Whenever you'd like to do that, come up, and it might be nice to take some cat cows just to move the shoulders around. Okay. Hope I can remember all this. Okay, as you're ready, we find the core, right? I find a strengthening action through my right side, and I slowly lift the left arm. Now, this is where I'm trying to teach your body how to relax this, the gripping, and to start to get more strengthening through here, that lateral line, which will help your upper trap. So as I lift up, if I notice my neck cringing, I'm going to lower it down until I can feel that squeezing in and that elongating from the armpit through the tricep line. So I want to do this really slowly and carefully. I feel that. I feel the shoulder widen. My collarbones widen. The right leg steps back and I lift it. I'm widening my pelvis on my left thigh bone for three. Get as long as you can for two. And then the left arm goes down. I tuck the left toes under and I lift the right arm. Now see if you can get as long as you can from your right heel to your right palm. Just getting as long as I can, feeling that belly tone towards the back of the pelvis so I have all that good core energy to help. Right leg forward, drop through your left knee, grab the strap if you want it. So we have this heaviness to the left thigh so I can feel the quad stretch. I want the strap, squeeze it in. It's okay for my shoulders to, I just won't want to squinch the neck. So pushing into the strap should help that a little bit. Stay for three, stay for two, and then as you're ready, slowly come down. Switch it up if you want it, you don't have to. Shoulders on your back, palms face in. Before you go forward, press into that back leg so I get it nice and firm, and then I allow my hips to come forward, and I'll allow this to come away if I want. Certainly you don't have to. Now feel as the wrists go down, I get longer through my neck. And a couple more breaths. The more I press back with my back leg, I have strength to move forward. And then as you're ready, I'm going to let that strap go for a moment. I'll step and I'll fold forward. And I'll just kind of let it go. So I can bend the knees, shake it out. 
the right knee will step behind the left. And I bend both knees and I find a nice little kind of flexible kind of squat here. Hands to the waist, long spine come up. So now I'm gonna take ooh, my right arm up, practice that same work, outer border lifting, inner border descending and softening. Grab onto that wrist, elevate the scapula to go to the left. And then my head can just kind of hold on, or my bicep can hold on to my head. Big side stretch. And then release it. Step both legs together. Okay. Arm circle sweep up. Practicing all that work as if you had the strap. Exhale, fold forward. Come up higher than your hips for your halfway lift. Remember, your arms can come forward if you like. And then we're going to fold again. So I believe it's the right leg that we have forward. I think that's right. Come back in, grab the strap. Remember, the strap is just optional. I can be doing the same exact thing without it. Press, bring the strap away, hinge forward. So now I'm going to straighten the back leg. Take flight if you want, or stay in the hinged forward lunge. So don't forget last month's work of firming your inner thigh and feeling the outer arch of your right foot. Just lift a bit, just a little bit lighter. And then as you're ready, bend the right knee, land in a more time to readjust. <sighs> so this is that single variation. So I'm going to bend the right knee, come on in. In the first few breaths, I'm just finding the strength of my legs. I just want to really feel that the legs have got me so that as I'm moving the torso, the legs stay strong, okay? When I'm ready, I'll pick the core energy up, bring it towards my heart, firm up these uh, back body muscles, okay? So the shoulder blades draw together. I'm pressing into the strap of my habit. So as I firm the back leg, start to move towards the right. Don't have to get too far. And then I lengthen fingertips and neck. Even turn to face down. Five. Breathe. Try not to clench your jaw. And as you're ready, slowly come up. Straighten your front leg. Switch. Just for a few moments, just straightening and lifting. Just kind of getting that active work. Back leg so strong. So if this was too much for the triangle pose, you don't have to do it. Otherwise, when you're ready, find triangle, thumbs face forward, bring them forward. And again, I hug back, squeeze in a bit as I'm pressing into the strap. And as I lift my arms, it's okay to lift the shoulder blades, just don't let them forward. So find your own edge, get as long as you can, that core, and then hinge towards the side, and then again, it's some type of triangle. So I'm gonna try and elongate that left seam as much as I can. I could let my neck go. One more breath. And then press into your feet to come up. Ooh, and relax. Let the strap go for a moment. Hands to the waist, take a deep breath, and then exhale, fold. So now we have the left hand forward on a block if you needed palm tented. Cat your back, which means my shoulder blades round, okay? Ray rounds. They've been doing a lot of uh, drawing together and doing the opposite action now. With your right hand, grab the outer shin and then start to do that rounded position twist. So I'm bending my right elbow. Continuing to round up her back, and now you should feel that shoulder blade doing a nice stretch. Tongue get heavy, your head gets heavy. <sighs> okay, slowly untwist. Take a moment if you need to floss the hips a few times and then come back towards the front of your mat. Knees down, all fours, and then so if when we did the block on the high setting, you were like, wow, that was challenging to keep my chest and hips together, keep it on the high end. If you want to take it down a little lower, you can practice that. But what I'm looking for and what I tend to see a lot in classes, I'm sure you guys were never the ones that did this, but I see a lot of this 
the hips are high and the chest is, or I see a lot of rolling down. It's like that. So I'm trying to get you to keep the shoulders and hips together. And we work the tricep and shoulders stay here. They actually don't do this and they don't do this either. They stay completely like plank. But now we just add the elbows in, right? So all this work of squeezing in is the same work we do in Chaturanga. So pick whatever option. You want to make it even more challenging, even down further, okay? So we're just going to do five. You can go off your knees if you feel like you can. So first, can you feel that squeezing in of your armpits? Can you feel the belly muscles strong? You come forward, elbows straight in, tap, and then come up. Come forward a bit, elbows in towards your waist, tap, push out and away. Three more. I'm just going to watch. Nice, Lauren. Yes, that's awesome. Yes, Rachel, nice. Oh, look at those. Yes, good. Keep that shoulder blade wide and full. Nice. Good, good work done. Yep. Awesome. James, a little closer in with your elbows. A little closer in. Yes, like that. Keep the neck really long. Good, you guys. So relax. Whew. Nice, nice work. Did that feel different? A little bit. Like it, it's when you do chaturanga from the really strong, it's like you realize that like doing one of them really well is a lot of work. Okay, so let's come on down. Locust pose again. You can squeeze a block or another option is to take this around your ankles if you just want something different. Yeah. And I could work it this way. Yeah, so it doesn't really matter. Just different things to work. So if you don't have a strap, like thumbs face down. I pull my arms back, reach through my fingertips, and lift. So this is just giving me some other type of sensations. Three, two, and relax. Shake it out. Shake it out. And then come up and back, child's pose, cat cow, all the things that help you kind of reset your body. Great job. <sighs> okay. Let those hips move side to side. Okay, we're going to come to a seat and work a little bit of uh, twisting with strong shoulders. So I'm going to show this to you. And uh, then we're going to do it in a lunge, but we're going to do it seated first. So I'm going to sit up tall, and this heel is going to go further forward than normal. So it's not here like it normally is. But if even sitting like this, you notice your pelvis tucking over, please get a blanket and sit up, put it on your sitting bones to sit, okay? So I want you to kind of pull up to your shin and sit up nice and tall. So I can feel kind of that length of my spine. Okay, with my left arm, I'm gonna press it back or on a block. And I wanna feel that I'm staying kind of really tall, okay? Right arm gonna go up. And I'm going to try and twist and get my elbow on the inside, outside of my knee, right? So I want to really allow myself to press through. So the shoulders can draw on your back a bit. So a little bit more of those, uh, kind of that work like when we had the strap up. Okay. So for a moment, I'm going to let you bring your right palm in like a prayer. And then maybe you bring your left. Can you feel, again, that strength of your shoulders? You can even do this number if that kind of helps you feel the pressing of this shoulder into your thigh, yeah? Keep that. Start to move your left thigh away. Oh, keep your belly muscles working, palms pressing. Can you feel that right shoulder blade drawing you into the twist? And then let it go. Oh, let's stretch it out. So roll back a moment. Whew. Okay, take your left leg straight up. Either right leg down, that's one option, right leg all the way down. Left arm is gonna press into the floor, right arm up. I'm gonna reach up and try to hook that leg. This hand can also be here for your neck. Same work, pushing thigh and arm together. Maybe, I, it's hard for me to get my hands together, so I kind of would do this number. Same work for the twist for five, four. If your neck is bothering you, stay here. Three, 
to release that right shoulder blade and bring it in. <sighs> Massage. Maybe it's a happy baby or a Baddha Konasana variation before we go to the second side. Okay, roll on up. So this time it's the right leg that is going to come, you know, just kind of somewhat up. I'm going to grab onto my shin and sit up nice and tall. So kind of noticing what muscles are bringing you up. So a lot of times we kind of over recruit those hip flexors. So can you feel even like your core muscles lifting up kind of out of the pelvis a bit? Can you feel those erector spinal muscles kind of feeling elongated? That kind of helps. Right arm comes back from my second spine. If I need something like to press on as a block, that totally works too. So I'm going to lift up with my left arm, stay lifted, twist, and I'm going to use that elbow to thigh. So I am pressing to get a little bit more twist. But as I'm pressing, right, I want to keep that left shoulder blade elongating but also squeezing towards my thigh a bit. So I'm kind of leveraging that outer left shoulder. It's just a way to work it. And then slowly, maybe my left hand finds a half prayer. I could keep it right where it is, if not. Maybe my right arm lifts. Can I stay exactly as I was? And either open arm twist or prayer twist. So open arm, pressing into it. I want you to feel this outer left shoulder or hand to the heart. And then again, take your foot away. See if you can stay right where you are in space. Doing those same work. And let it go. Whew. Lay on your back. Left foot can come down, right leg can come up. The reason I'm saying that is if it overcooks again your hip flexors, then just use that left leg to grab. So right arm to the floor, or you know you're going to head behind your head because your neck over a crease. So lift up and then try to hook that elbow somewhere along your thigh. You're going to have to use that active resistance, the same thing we worked in the strap. Okay, and then from here, twist. So kind of use it to recruit the left shoulder at the same time you're elongating it. For three, maybe it's here. Two, and relax. Side to side, let it go. And then rock and roll yourself up. Downward facing dog. Okay, last little bit of active work to elongate. So the left leg is gonna lift. So for a moment, turn the thigh in the socket. So I just did a little extra rotation and lift it up really high. So it's turning at an angle. Keep your right outer hip firming back. And just kind of feel that inner thigh work, outer hip strengthening. Firm that whole right shoulder blade. And then as you're ready, step the left leg forward. Right knee is gonna come down, okay? So I'm gonna be in a really short stance and it's not necessarily a hip flexor stance yet. So same work we did before, left palm presses, right arm lifts, and then do that twist. So if I need to add a block to give me some space, I can. The block is nice, or a, even a pillow. So first I'm gonna work the twist here. So remember, I'm releasing the right shoulder away from the midline at the same time I'm pressing it into the thigh. So then I can make a prayer if I want. I can go wide. If I want, I can lift the right leg. Okay, you have five breaths to work that shoulder, same way we did, any way you want. Maybe you want to practice lifting off your thigh. Three, two, and as you're ready, hands come down, straighten your front leg. Just that hamstring stretch, let the head go. And then as you're ready, take that knee down. Just lift up for a moment, breath in. And on the exhale, hands to the floor. So again, you can practice chaturanga with the block. If you don't want to, you can skip it and do cat-cows. So maybe there's no block and you practice all the way to the floor. Your pose of choice. You can repeat something we've been doing. You can do a cobra, something else. We'll meet in child's pose or down dog. Okay, 
Okay. Final side, tuck your toes, downward facing dog. So it's really key here to keep the left hip from buckling in. So I want to keep it really neutral as I lift my right. This is just work in the hip socket to turn the thigh out and to lift it higher. You should feel the side of your butt really engaged. And as I'm ready, I'm going to step the right leg forward, drop to the left knee, and I come up to a 90 degree lunge. Right palm down, left arm up. And then I'm going to hook and twist. So I do have a little bit of a rounded upper back, which is why I have to balance that by pressing arm into thigh to bring the chest forward. So maybe it's just here. Maybe I'm doing this. Maybe I do my kind of uh, scary hands. <laughs> maybe it's prayer hands. As you get that strength in that outer left shoulder, maybe you lift the back thigh. Get as long as you can while you're pulling your chest through. Okay, as you're ready, one more deep breath. And then hands to the floor, straighten your right leg. Give me these blocks in your hands. My back heel's lifted. Neck is long. And then back knee down just for a breath or so. Lift up, get that hip flexor. And then hands down. So last time to practice uh, chaturanga, just one. So trying your best to do that best chaturanga to the floor. So keeping chest and hips in the same line as you go all the way down. Knees are totally fine, you guys. Nice, that was awesome, Guido, yep. Nice, Kathleen, yeah. Cobra, if you wanted something else, Sphinx pose works too. You don't have to do anything. And then you're just gonna meet in child's pose or down dog. Take some breaths. <sighs> Let all that sink in. So we've worked a lot of strengthening on the back chain, the side chain. <sighs> yeah, okay. All righty. So we're gonna get upside down. So uh, you, if you have blocks, you can work a dolphin or uh, a prep for dolphin by just kind of coming here and pressing from your armpits through your arms, head down. So this could be a great way to work. If not, I can come up to downward dog. And again, the block just kind of adds a little bit more um, softness in the neck. So it's that same work of hugging in, broadening, and reaching. So if you're comfortable here, and you want to come to a wall space and kick up into forearm stand, those of you that know that, that's, this is a great way to apply that, or just lifting a leg. That can be like the next best thing. So once again, the steps are relaxing our head, kind of firming the armpits in as I widen into the shoulder blades. And then as I'm ready, maybe I lift the hips, I might not, but I'm reaching from armpits to the widest part of the forearm, not the elbow joint itself, the widest part. Then from there, I lengthen towards the wrist. So three, two breaths, one more. And then slowly just coming to a seat, letting your shoulders roll, <sighs> letting your neck roll. All those good things. Okay, we're just gonna stand up for a moment just to shake the shoulders out. That's it, don't get working. <laughs> so I'm just allowing the arms to kind of do this, just shake them out. So the wrists are heavy, you can swing fast or slow. And then just kind of shimmy them out a bit. Might even kind of shake the arms. <laughs> Yeah, good, fling the wrist, roll the neck. Just a way to kind of re remind the shoulders to loosen up all that work we did. You can shrug and unshrug the shoulders. And then when that feels good, we're gonna come all the way back on our back, a little vinyasa down. So as you're ready, last circle, squeeze to reach up. And you hold this an extra bit. Exhale, forward fold. About halfway lift a little bit higher than your hips to recruit the low back. Exhale, fold. And then knees down, all fours. 
cat cow. And then neutralize and then roll your hips to one side. And then bring them forward. Arms lift up, inhale, and slowly lowering it down. If you have a strap, go ahead and grab it. If you don't, a towel will work or a blanket lasso. We're going to hold it in our right hand. The left hand will come into that left thigh just to allow it to kind of anchor down. Left arm can also be out here. And we're going to open through the right thigh towards the wall. If you have a wall or something you want to rest your leg on, that totally works. A block under that right thigh also works. So you'll tend to want to lean to the right, so allow your right, your left shoulder blade to get a little heavier, your left hip point to get a little wider. Kind of press that left heel firmly into the ground so you feel anchored. Breathe in and out. And then taking that leg up nice and slow, either putting both legs in or just one. Now the strap is held by the left hand. I move my hips up and to the right, and I drop them towards the left. So I can either use my biceps here and rest my feet on a block, or I can go all the way down. Then from here, I'm going to open and peel open on the right. So you may or may not get as much of a hip stretch with both. So you always just have done one. But if you more you roll this outer right hip towards the bottom edge of your mat and flex your feet, you might notice a little bit more sensation. Otherwise, you could just take one leg out. So it's really up to you. And then as you're ready, using the strength of your core to bring the legs up, switch. So the left foot goes in the strap, the right foot goes all the way to the floor. Oops. Okay. Strap goes into the left hand. The right hand is, helps anchor the pelvis and the shoulder. Nice and slow. Take the leg out. Remember, you can prop up the hip on a block. So this is another way to kind of add a little bit of a kickstand so you don't roll to the left. So what you might notice when you do that is you get more groin opening uh, because it's not uh, having to kind of work against gravity as much. So it's totally up to you. You can kind of play around with the differences. Keep broadening that right pelvis, your right chest, right shoulder gets heavy, right heel. And then bringing your left leg up. Remember, we're either lasso both feet or just one. Right hand grabs the strap. If you're not moving both hips to the left to drop both legs, you can just drop. Even a little bit works or a lot. A wall space for that foot can be nice, so can a block to catch it. And again, rolling the outer left hip away from your pelvis, so kind of rolling that hip down will. Uh, Increase the sensation, perhaps. And then one more deep breath. And then slowly coming up. Go ahead and re-bend the knees. Windshield wiper a bit just to mobilize the hips again after all that. We're going to roll onto your side, and we're going to take that right arm up. We're going to inner rotate it and then take it to the small of the back. So I'm going to show this to you on the other side so you can see it. Arm up, inner rotates, I bring it somewhere up my back to my own ability. And then I'm gonna take this foot back to kind of ease into it, and I'm gonna lay on my back. So I might not have all my weight there, but I just wanna kind of have gravity in order to feel that internal rotation for the leg, for the arm, I'm sorry. 
If you want to add the double, the right, uh, the left arm can come back. And I can reach down. I'm not really necessarily trying to touch the hands here. So I could also just add a reach. So just kind of letting gravity work to let the rib cage soften towards the arm. If this is too much, then you kind of stay towards the right of it. I'm sorry, towards the left. I forgot I'm shadowing or mirroring. Okay, slowly release. As you release the arm, stretch it out, up, and then back. So now roll to your right hip. We'll do the same thing like I was just showing you. So the arm comes up. I inner rotate the joint. Drop the arm, snake it up the back, wherever it feels good. This is where this left foot needs to temper how much pressure you put. We're not trying to jam the shoulder into anything, just letting gravity kind of work. So just kind of go slow, finding the space that feels okay. And if at any point your body says stop, then you back out. And then maybe it feels okay to put more and more weight. And just kind of noticing if the rib cage and the chest can drop towards the back body. And if it can't, that's okay. Maybe the right arm wants to reach up and add another bind too, but it doesn't have to. I find that this one doesn't necessarily feel as good as the bottom arm, at least not for me. And then slowly rolling off. So watch as I come out. I want to first straighten the arm pointing down and then externally right, rotate it to come up and then relax just so that I don't overtax it. Come back onto your back. Just kind of take some moments just to feel that if there's any final stretches, inversions, back bends, anything that you feel you need, go ahead and take it. So kind of allowing yourself to kind of find a position. So maybe you kind of stretch those arms out and away, kind of more actively to rest. Maybe you want to lay on your stomach. So when you feel ready to rest, get in your favorite position to rest. Take a couple breaths just to bring your breath right into the center of your body and on the exhale, like dissipating that breath throughout your body. Letting the exhale kind of invite you into a deeper relaxation for the next couple minutes. Softening your hips, softening your belly, chest, softening throat, jaw, tongue, softening the eyes, front of the forehead.
take five more breaths just to intend and to using your own um, power and energy, inviting yourself towards a deeper relaxation, a deeper embodiment, a deeper attunement with the wisdom within yourself. And then slowly, when you're ready to move again, if you feel that need, start to wiggle fingers and toes and making your way nice and slowly up to a seat. So rubbing your hands together. Placing one hand over your throat and one hand over your heart. My hope is through this work in our shoulders and our heart that we're doing, that we're able to find a more heartfelt, embodied, wise way of communicating, right? Since these are our communicators. So let's chant an ohm together to close. A nice deep breath in. Om. The light in me honors the light in you, friends. I'm so grateful that you showed up today. Thank you for practicing. Thank you for your awesome presence and for being willing to do this work with me. Thank you. <laughs>